Hey, Joe in Chicago, Matthew here with FreePrescriptionLenses.com and with the help of my GoPro camera, I'm going to show you how I cut transition lenses, well, your prescription, with Transitions Gray lenses with Crizal Anti-Glare for your own Ray-Ban 2132 New Wayfair in size 55. Now, I'm going to, you have color 811, which is the blue rubber, but I'm going to be demonstrating on color 789 since your lenses are being shipped to Chicago. I'm going to use the Chicago Bears color that this Ray-Ban comes in. So in order to take out your original lenses, you turn the frame downward. I'm right-handed, so I hold the, the frame in my left hand, and you're always going to change the lenses with your thumb at the nose. You're always going to push down. So with your thumb at the nose, and of course I grab the lens by the other side so it doesn't fall on the counter, but I press down with my thumb and I put my other thumb on top press and I can torque the frame a little bit you're not going to hurt the frame and just push downward out comes your heavy glass lenses I do the same thing on this side out comes that lens and now I'm going to put your frame or this frame the size 55 frame into the tracing element of my edger we're going to hit the trace button and the first thing that's going to happen is this stylus is going to pop up and it's going to trace the shape of the right side of the frame before moving over and tracing the left. Here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed with, with quality. You buy a genuine authentic Ray-Ban frame and receive free clear single vision prescription lenses. But since you didn't buy the frame for me, I got to charge you for the lenses. But everyone else just pays the upgrade to the transitions or the Crizal Anti-Glare. So I'm going to take the frame out of here. Let's go ahead and get uh, the pupillary distance set. Yours is 33.5 on both eyes. It automatically starts at 32.5. So I'm going to hit this plus button until that number gets up to 33.5. We are good to go there. So I'm going to take your lenses. Let's take them down here to my Marco 101 lensometer. Your right eye reads minus 1, minus 75. That's your left lens. Minus 1, minus 75 at 165 so I'm going to spin the axis wheel to 165 and put the power drum on minus one let me make sure it's zeroed out yes now we're going to put it at minus one in fact let me go ahead and mark your lenses you're going to be receiving the original packet so you know that these are the authentic brands that I am sending you and where's a good red pen this is your right lens minus one minus 75 that is your right this is your left so let me take your right lens out of its protective packet. And of course, it comes with a little plastic protector on the front to prevent scratches to the front of the lens while it is being shipped. And it's on 165, it's on minus one. So I'm gonna put your lens in and I'm gonna rotate your lens until the sphere power comes in clearly, which is the minus one component of your prescription. Check your astigmatism correction, which is minus 75. That looks good, so I'm gonna put three dots on your lenses. They are rather light that you can't see, so I'm going to take my pen, darken this third one, and we're going to label that one right. Let's do the same thing now for your left lens. Take it out as a protective sleeve. Take the little protective coating off the front. Now the axis on the left eye is 20. Spin the axis wheel to 20. Hopefully you can see that. The power is minus one and a quarter, so I'm going to set it there on the power drum. Again, rotate your lens until the sphere power comes in clearly. Get everything done that way, and let's put three more dots on there. And of course, the third one never comes up well, so I'm going to darken that. We're going to label that one L. So let's go back down here, and I'm going to take your right lens. Hopefully, this shows up well enough on here. The reason why I put those three dots, in fact, let me darken them for this first one so you can see what I'm doing at home. I've actually got a little bit of white ink. For some reason it shows up very well on the computer so now you can see him what's this dot over on the side that's actually just moisture but this dot in the center is going to be your optical center let me rotate these here and that's going to go right there the blue square the blue cross is the geometric center of your frame but with your pupillary distance I'm going to get that first dot right there inside that box and then these other two dots we're going to line up on that one meridian. Now we are good. Now, this is a block. This is what's going to need to be attached to your lens while it's cutting. This is what's going to hold it in place, essentially in the lathe. And I need a double-sided adhesive sticker. The bright green side is the sticky side. I'm going to stick that on the first one. Take the second one. Let's do the same thing. Put that on there. I'm going to pull this piece of paper away to make 
my side green and sticky now of course this little silver button is a magnet that's what's going to hold it in place in this arm and then i'm going to hit this button and the arm's going to come down and place the block onto the lens i'm going to do the same thing now for the left lens this automatically flips over and automatically gives me the same pupillary distance on the other side and i'm going to get these lined up just right this again is your optical center and these dots on opposite sides on that line shows me that it's lined up in there perfectly. Take the paper off, let the magnet hold it in place, hit that button, the arm comes down, places the block onto the lens. So I'm going to take your right lens, in fact let's wake up the computer. This is the edger. This costs $40,000, weighs 200 pounds. I recommend everyone go out and get one, put it on your kitchen counter and you won't need me anymore. But that is the final shape of your lens that's going to be cut, just a magnified version of it. The actual cutting wheel is over here on the far right. It's going to, it's a heavy grit wheel that's going to grind away your lens material until it's the final size. And let's go ahead and put, let's see, these are polycarbonate lenses being cut on the soft cycle and I do not want to polish. So I'm going to take that button off. And then I'm going to hit the green arrow start button. The door closes. The clamp shuts while making a sound because <laughs> it has a tight seal. And then two white calipers are going to come and they're going to trace the shape of the right side of your frame. Tracing both sides of the lens at once. Measuring the thickness of the lens to know exactly where to place the bevel so it will fit best inside your frame. Now your lenses are, are very thin so it's not going to poke out. But if these were thick lenses it could move the bevel front or back depending on where it would best fit inside the frame. Now in just a moment you're going to hear a grinding sound and that is the polycarbonate material being removed from your lens. Now these are stock lenses so I order them large so I can cut them down to fit into any frame that I may need to, to use. Now your lenses are made out of polycarbonate. This brand calls it Airwear. Polycarb is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. It is also virtually unbreakable. Your lenses are bulletproof up to 22 caliber and have both UVA and UVB protection. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin. Well, your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin. So you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes. It never needs to be reapplied like the lotions, creams, and sprays that we use when we go outside this is permanent now the other nice thing about your lenses is it is an aspheric lens meaning that not only is it a thinner lens but the front curvature is flatter so that's going to give you a wider field of view and also cosmetically fit best inside the frame now these lenses are the transition 7 gray lenses and they have the Crizal Alize anti-glare coating I'll show you what the transition does at the end, but anti-glare is actually three features in one. The first feature is that it eliminates glare while driving at night, particularly driving at night in the rain, but from street lights, stop lights, computer screens, overhead, fluorescent lights. The second feature that I like, it's an anti-reflection lens. So when someone's looking at you, they're not looking at the reflection in your glasses, or if someone takes a picture with a flash, you don't see the flash lit up in your lens like you see the overhead lights in, in this lens and the third feature that I like the practical side is it comes with the best scratch protection in the business years ago the machine they used to apply the anti-glare coating to your lens cost over a million dollars it takes 24 hours they vaporize seven layers onto your lens seven different color spectrums and that's what eliminates the glare so because of the time and expense that it takes to apply that, they put the best scratch protection that they can on top of that to protect their investment. So your lens has been cut. It's actually getting a safety bevel, which means after the cutting cycle, there are some rough edges. So there's a little tiny wheel that's going around and smoothing out the back surface of the lens and then doing the front surface of the lens so there are no rough edges. Now if this fits, we can go ahead and start cutting the left lens, but there's a good chance we'll have to take this lens down a little bit more. So as soon as this is done, the door will open. I'm going to take the lens out of the chuck. This is the chuck, or as I like to call it, the Charles, because I don't know the machine well enough to call it chuck. Sorry, a little optical humor there. 
I'm just going to inspect to make sure there's no optical debris left over, a little schwarf as we in the business call it. So I'm going to tuck the lens in at the outside corner here and using my thumbs to press down the nose. Now that goes in pretty well. Let me just test it by popping it out. I think that's good. Let's go ahead and start cutting your left lens. Let's put it into the chuck. Flip that over to that side and hit start. The door closes. The clamp shuts a little quieter because it has moisture on it now. But this time the calipers, those little white calipers in there that are just now compressing down, they're going to trace the left side of your lens to make sure where to place the bevel. Now I'm going to go ahead and pop this block off since it is no longer needed. And to dry this off one more time while keeping that red dot in the center, that is your optical center, which I'll need to measure later. But when you get these in the mail to mount your lenses, you're going to hold the frame upright like this. Now I have the side I'm working on closest to me and this is perpendicular to my body. But you're going to take the lens, you're going to tuck it in at the outside corner first, and then using your thumbs you press down at the nose and it snaps in perfectly. Now while that is cutting, I want to go ahead and inspect the right lens. I'm going to spin the axis wheel back to 165. Hopefully you can see that exactly halfway between 160 and 170. I'm going to put the lens in right above that red dot and let me darken that red dot for you. And I'm going to measure what it reads right there at that red dot. And I am getting minus one on the number wheel. I'm going to check your stigmatism correction, which is three steps. And we are getting minus 175. We are one tick mark away from two. So we are three fourths of the way from one to two. The unit of measurement we use in the optical world is called a diopter. And it goes in quarter increments starting at zero, going up in quarter increments from there, 0 0.25, 0 0.50, 0 0.75, one, one and a quarter, 150, 175, two, and so on. So without your glasses on, your right eye reads minus one, minus 75 at 165. You need four steps of correction for your farsightedness. Without your glasses on, everything is much larger than it really appears. So that's why there is a minus sign. Your lens will minify four steps to get everything the correct size that it needs to be. Now, once it's the correct size, we have to correct for the astigmatism. And there is a stigma over the word astigmatism. It just means shape. It's like saying someone has straight hair, someone else has curly hair. That is ease. It's just referring to a shape. It is not a disease. It is not an affliction. It fluctuates. It comes and goes. Really, it's no big deal when it comes to glasses. It's more expensive with contacts, but it's no big deal on glasses. Now, this first number, again, makes everything the correct size. Astigmatism is what makes everything blurry or fuzzy. That's why sixes and eights look alike, or the letters P and F. And that is why you squint, because you're trying to change the shape of your eye to make everything a little better. So if you think of this as the fine-tune knob, we're going to turn that knob to 165 on a straight line, which is zero on this side and 180 over here with 90 being in the middle. We're going to turn it past the 90 all the way to 165, almost to 180. Now your left eye reads minus one and a quarter, minus 75 at 20. So you need five steps of correction for your left eye, still three steps of astigmatism correction, but we're only going to turn that knob to 20 over here. Now 165 and 20 seem far apart. Now these first two numbers are real values. This last number could be anywhere from 0 to 180. That is your axis. 165 is 15 degrees away from the 180 line. 20 is 20 degrees away from the 180. So really, you're only 15 to 20 degrees away from this line. And that's what those numbers mean. Now your left lens is done. Let's take that out. Let's dry your lens off so it's not slippery. Let's see if this fits. Where is the frame I'm using? That's it, the 789, your Chicago Bears color. But again, I'm going to tuck the lens in on the left side here. And again, I'm not trying to reach across the frame. And again, your lenses are unbreakable, so you're not going to hurt your lens by doing this. And since this is wintertime, just make sure your frame is at room temperature. If people leave their frames in their car overnight in cold places, the plastic can become brittle. So as long as your frame is at room temperature, it's not going to hurt it. But I'm going to tuck the lens in at the outside corner here, and then using my thumbs, press down. That snaps in easily. You're going to do the same thing. I'm going to take that block off, dry that, and again, I'm going to measure right where that red dot is, the optical center. That is your pupillary distance for your left eye. I'm going to spin the axis wheel back to 20 and measure, and I'm getting 
minus one and a quarter. We're almost at 150, but you have three steps of astigmatism correction, so we end up at minus two. Now, do you remember high school algebra where you add two like signs together? Forget high school algebra. Today's terminology, if someone had borrowed a dollar twenty-five from you and then they borrowed another seventy-five cents, they would owe you two dollars total. We're at two diopters. So that is made correctly. The last measurement I want to check, your pupillary distance is 33.5 in both eyes for a combined value of 67. I am going to turn your card around. I'm going to place the PD stick. Don't worry, that's only ink. You have caught me red-thumbed. It's better being caught red-handed. But it's ink from my lensometer I get on there all day. But I'm going to place the zero on your right lens and then when we get to the left lens we're getting 67 millimeters so that is cut perfectly i'm going to go ahead and clean your lenses and then i'm going to show you what I, they look like when i turn them dark let's get those dots off of there now i will be sending you your crizol cleaning cloth that you can use to clean the fingerprints off your lenses after you mount these and i'm also going to be including instructions on how to care for your Crizol cloth so it'll last you for years, as well as cleaning instructions for your glasses too. But this is what your prescription lenses look like. See how they minify the print in the background? But that's what they look like while they are clear. I'm going to go ahead and expose them to a strong burst of ultraviolet light back here in my little transitions box. Now, as you will see, it takes, well, once I hit the button, it takes about 30 seconds. Look at that orange glow. It takes about 30 to 45 seconds for your lenses to darken. When you go outside, it takes a little bit slower. When you come back inside, 45 seconds to a minute to a minute 15. Now, Joe in Chicago, pay attention. This is important. All transition lenses get dark on day one. Give them two weeks of constant exposure to the sun, daily exposure. They will keep getting darker every day for the first two weeks till they get to their final setting. After that, they will work for years with maximum performance. The only time they will not work is if you're behind the windshield in a car as I explained to you, because your windshield absorbs all the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays so your dashboard doesn't crack from sitting in the sun. Plus, your lenses are, are temperature sensitive. They will get darker when it's below 85 degrees than they will when it's much above 85. When it's 100 degrees outside, you're miserable, they're miserable. Nothing likes to work 100% when it's 100 degrees outside. So that is it. That is the first time of me activating your lenses. They will continue to darken every day for the first two weeks, as I explained. If anyone has any questions, just email me at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com. Joe in Chicago, I hope you enjoyed watching me as I cut your prescription Transition 7 gray lenses with Crizol Alizé. And everyone else has got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.